Hello to everyone. So this video is going to be about account security. So when you receive your brand new NAS and you're going to start configuring it, you have to think about account security. This is your first line of defense against attackers. And if you have the best protection in the world, uh, the best protection system in the world, but you have weak passwords and weak accounts, well, it's all for nothing. So um, there are some best practices to follow and here I'm going to talk uh, to you about them. So first of all, the uh, important thing to do is to disable the guest account. It is also with the default administrator account. It's to change the password with a strong one to enable two-factor authentication and to disable it. And of course, before you do all that, you need to create a new administrator password where you do not find any admin, administrator, administrator and everything or root. You need to have some kind of, you know, uh, random name for your administrator account. So that's, so that's the first thing. Now, the second thing in the control panel in the user and advanced settings, here you're going to have a lot of um, parameters so you can force the users to have strong passwords. It's very important to force them to have um, to have the, the, the good password. So this is where we're going to uh, configure the policy. So, of course, you can check all that. So if the administrator creates or reset the password, the user is going to have to uh, change it before being able to use the NAS and you can also apply uh, some strength rules so where you can exclude name and description of user from password lowercase and uppercase numeric special exclude common password having a minimal password length and uh, some password history if you want you also have some password expiration features where you can so en en enable the expiration uh, also have a minimum password valid duration so this will make that uh, a user a, a user cannot change its password before the end of this period you can also allow them to change the password after expiration and send expiration notification emails if you want before it expires now there is something very important it's the two step verification i advise you to enforce two-step verification for all users so you are sure that uh, when they ever try to connect to the system it is them that are trying to connect so this is something quite important um, and uh, that's it for this part when you're going to enable the two the two-step verification for a user the user is going to have the special application like google oat um, and uh, the Synology will create some random passwords too that the user can use whenever he forgets the his devices for example for the two-factor authentication so if he lost the device or uh, if he had a problem with the Google Auth application then uh, he can use those special temporary um, it's a one-time use password actually I think there's five of them which are created now you have um, in the security tab for account, you have other features. You have the account protection and the um, auto block uh, feature. So those are two completely separate functions. They are not the same. I would like to stress out that although it blocks the account, or the, it's not the same. So first of all, the auto block features, what it does, it, it is if a user uh, um, a hacker tries to connect to your system with the same or with different accounts and he fails here in this case after 10, att 10 attempts within 5 minutes his IP address will be blocked and for him to, um, to bypass this feature is just to use another IP address but that's all it only blocks the IP address and he will see um, in the port in the web portal he will see that he was um, his IP address got blocked now for the account protection it's completely different the account protection is a feature that will like disable the login for the account if an account is being uh, targeted for example 
you have the test account and you have a hacker that tries to enter if he goes over five failures within five minutes the account will be blocked so that means that uh, only the account will be blocked not the ip address so that means that he can uh, try to uh, target other accounts if he ever gets blocked um, so he will not see actually that he gets blocked this time it will always say the same thing the, the same thing is that you know that there is a wrong password and he cannot enter but this also means that any kind of device that you are using if the account is blocked no one even the legitimate user will be able to connect with its account so that's quite interesting and i find that those two features are you know they complete each other but it's not i, I suggest that you use both of them and not only just one of them now there is also the notion of untrusted clients and trusted clients um, a trusted client is a device that was able to successfully connect to the NAS with an account. And the un untrusted client is a device that never was able to successfully connect. So it's maybe the first time this device tries to connect with this account on the NAS. And if whenever it gets blocked, you can manage the protected accounts or the manage the trusted clients, clients in order to... Um, uh, to disable the, the blocking if you, you ever get blocked. So this is how to protect your account. Now for the, the, the last part is how to detect that something strange is happening. So there are different ways of doing that. First of all, you can use the security advisor and in the checklist, you can see that you have some login analysis um, uh, alerts or, you know, um, you, the system can analyze uh, strange behaviors concerning uh, login activities, or if some brute force attempts um, is on the way, it will be able to, to alert you after the scan has been done. So this is a little bit, you know, post uh, attack. It's not really, uh, it's not really real time. The abnormal login activities, this is more of a feature which allows you to see that, for example, if this user is always logging using a, uh, logging in using an iPhone, suddenly he uses an Android in China. And in this case, it will trigger an alert in the system. You can also see that um, be alerted if you have weak password, for example, if the auto block is disabled and everything. So this is a very important features for you to help to see if you have any um, non-compliant settings or underway. Now you can also, of course, of course, see in the logs in the connection, you can see what kind of uh, users uh, from uh, where they try to connect so you can see and review the logging activity if you want. And you have also the possibility to uh, for some notifications. So for example, I have uh, keywords like if anyone logged in or failed to log in, to log in um, I will be alerted in real time with this. So every time those, those keywords are coming in, I'm gonna be alerted, which is great. So that's um, a way to detect that something weird has, uh, has happened. And now you can also have some more settings in the notifications. If you go into the advanced, you can have, for example, an email alert if there is a password change, if there is a new login behavior, um, and if you have an IP address that got blocked, and I guess in one, one more, um, if the account got protected. So this is also real time and it's very important for you to uh, be able to see if something is wrong. Now, the last thing I would like to uh, show you is more of the uh, two-factor authentication. I'm going to see if I can connect myself to the system. Now the page is in French, I don't know why. Let's see. Uh, 
Okay, so now uh, something quite interesting is that you can go here in the little human icon and you can go in this setting and then you can activate the uh, the second authentication factor. So as you can see, I didn't add. Uh, okay, so now I cannot really go further here. That's, that's not important. So here you can activate the two-factor authentication. And here you can see with the account protection, you can see if there is any kind of uh, special activities. For example, if the account got maybe uh, blocked that you are connected, you can cancel the protection. You can also trust the actual uh, client, so the actual browser that you're using, you can trust it. And here you can manage all the trusted clients. So here, this is the one that I have uh, just uh, trusted. So here I can uh, see what kind of devices are trusted. It's using the user agent. And I can also disable the uh, trust. If I don't trust the, a device, a special device that could be shown here, I can not trust it anymore if I want to. And the last thing here is um, account activity. So here you can see um, who is connected with the account. And you can also have uh, the memorized uh, devices. As I did not have the two second to two factor authentication activated, I cannot see what's here. So usually uh, what you're going to see here is every devices that when you had the two factor authentication on and that you had to enter the one time password, you have the little checkbox which allows you to remember the device. If you remember the device, you will find your device in here. And then you can, for example, uh, untrust uh, the device. So if you do this, it means that when you ever log back again with your device, you will have to enter again the one-time password. So this allows you to reset uh, all the uh, two-factor authentication uh, device remembering. So that's how it works. And um, you also have the uh, connection history. So how much, how, how many times I have connected to the system from which IP and everything. So this is quite practical and uh, that's it for the um, account protection and I hope this uh, video has been informative for you and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.